Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, they say you should do one thing every day that scares you, and today we're going to go ahead and disassemble the Herman Knives micro sting. All right, so this is a, uh, this is, this is a knife. Um, Herman Knives, I love, I really appreciate Herman Knives. They're very, very good, and this is, I've already been carrying this a fair bit, by the way. Um, I just haven't had the time to get around the film of this assembly, but, um, Herman Knives, the Achilles heel of Herman is disassembly. Uh, and it's just, it doesn't feel like something that Herman is really putting first and foremost in his uh, design choices. That's fine, that's a choice he can make, but oh boy, uh, it occasionally does kind of suck. And so I'm a little afraid that this guy is going to suck in that particular domain. So what we're going to go ahead and do is start taking this guy apart. But I'm going to go on ahead. I'm going to do things a little different this time. Uh, strategically speaking, a couple of things. This mat right here has a uh, kind of a border around it that is raised. And it has these little hexes, right? Uh, such that hopefully the uh, little tiny balls that are in here loose will not go too much further than that. The other thing that I have available to me that is my secret weapon... Uh, is actually something I had available for the last time, too, but uh, I just didn't realize it. I have, uh, Herman Knives has apparently of late been including a ball of, or I'm sorry, a bag of balls. A ball sack, if you will. And inside that ball sack, there are, uh, sort of unexpectedly, uh, five the extra bearings. So that if one of them does shoot itself off into the upper atmosphere, uh, then uh, we will... Uh, well, I'll be able to still, uh, you know, uh, tighten everything up afterwards. But I'm going to go on ahead and start off by removing the screws in the back here. The reason I'm going to do that is just because I want to do as much as I can before I remove all of the little tiny balls, right? Okay. So I have this guy at the very top here. Um, then I'm going to remove the clip screw, which should be a much shorter screw. And I'll just leave the clip right there. Okay. That means I have two more screws right here. I'm going to, in case you can't count and don't realize that that's the number two. Uh, in which case, I'm actually very concerned about your choice of children's TV. Right? I mean, good on you, I suppose. Um, yeah, but no. Okay, moving on. Uh <laughs> If you do flax this week, you're going to have some very bored children out there. Uh, but they'll have very good sense of how to disassemble pocket knives, which is probably not a good thing for a child to have. Anyways, moving right along here. So we've got right here one more screw to take out in the back, and then we have to take out the pivot here. And I'm a little torn as to how I want to proceed. I could go at it this way, I could go at this, but before I do anything rash, what I want to do is find myself the right bit here. And I am told that this should be a T20 or T25. Uh, that is T25, and that is not it. Um, come here. I don't know I've got one around here somewhere. You a T20? We are T20. Boom, shakalaka. Okay, there's a little bit of play and flex in there. And for what it's worth, by the way, I, I, I do want to be clear... This little guy comes with this little tool, right? It has a little wrench here that works exactly for that. I am going to go on ahead and uh, try and use the uh, an actual bit here, just because it'll be a little bit uh, easier. But yeah, okay. Yeah, see, that's making it nice and easy. So T20 is working. There is a little bit of kind of wobble in there. It doesn't feel like it fits T20 perfectly. Maybe it's a different... Slightly different torque standard or something. Not the end of the world. This is working quite well, clearly, but it is a factor here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, before I get the pivot fully out, I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to remove this final screw in the back here. What that should mean is that once I pull the pivot out, the entire knife is going to fall apart in my hands. That's fine. Uh, oops, already starting that process here. Okay. Put you off to the side here. Now we're going to put that down. There went the backspacer. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh, all right. Yes, that was a lose yourself reference, except in this case it's lose your bearings. Um, oh, boy. 
my rap debut is coming up here. I'm what I'm doing right now. So this has gotten out of hand. I'd like to be very clear at this. Well, technically it's in hand. But like already, this has gone a little bit off the rails because I don't want to be in this position here. There's nothing wrong specifically. There are no major problems except the, see, already we have a ball right there. You probably can't see it because it's freaking tiny. But what I'm doing here, what I've elected to do is I am holding the part of this that can hurt me. Right, these two sides, there's not a whole lot that can go too wrong with them. I'm going to go on ahead and take this guy out uh, of the running here and then go at this and just try to loosen this a little bit further because I imagine I don't have far to go here. And then once I do that, yeah, okay, see? Right there, nice and easy. And But the, the, the key insight there was to hold on to the blade itself. What the heck does that mean? There's a writing of some variety on there. All right, we'll address that in a moment here. But the very, very first step that I need to take here is to figure out where my balls are. Not those. I know where those are. Um, but thank you for checking. Uh, instead, I want to know where these balls are here. And if we look at this guy, we see that uh, all of these are in place. Right? They are just where they want to be. So I'm going to go on ahead and just put this entire scale with the balls in it off to the side here. This one is the one that appears to be yeeting balls, and that's fine. Uh, it, it, that is its prerogative. But uh, I want to use that knowledge here and uh, just address and group them all first. One question I have right now is why can I not remove this pivot? Why does this not want to push through? Um, that's a very good question and one I don't have an answer for. Can I remove the washer? I can. But unfortunately, what this means is that there are loose balls now in play. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the blade out of play for the moment as well. And right now, my focus is going to be on collecting balls. So uh, what I'm going to do is put some rubbing alcohol. And by the way, if you're curious about this or any of the tools I'm using, makeshabazz.com slash tools. Um, I'm going to take a little... Um, uh, this is a bamboo skewer, like for cooking, I think. I think I got it at the grocery store. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take this and use just the... Uh, because tweezers, unfortunately, have the tendency to grab and then... Ping, the, the, the ball's off to the, to, the, to the world there. And so what I want to do instead is use these... Use just the f basically stiction of the oil... Uh, to pick up these individual balls here because there is really no way that I am aware of that I can do, you know, really get them some energy behind them from this perspective. So I'm going to use that to kind of clean up and grab there. There we go. And here we go. And... It's funny, I, I I started this video joking, like, oh, the one thing every day that scares you, but this actually kind of low-key does, right? Like, I do this disassembly, I know that I am expected to do this, and frankly, I want to do it. It is a service of very, very low consequence that I can do for my viewership. Ah, oh, boy, I put too much oil on there. So now, as a result, it's trying to stick to the pivot here. Can I push the pivot through now? I do not appear to be able to. It's very weird. All right, well, we'll consider the pivot captive. But anyways, it, I was legitimately nervous about doing this. Like, I have been slightly avoiding it. Part of that's because I've been ridiculously busy, but part of it's just because I know... What the heck was that? All right. Well, either way. Kind of feels like the pivot has been peened open a little bit at the top there, but... It may just be that this... Hmm. Bizarre. Could just be lack of lubrication inside there. But either way, there's not really a reason I need to take the pivot out so I can go without it. But okay. What I'm going to do then is transfer everything. And now, right now, I'm going to take a little inventory of my surface here. And I'm going to try and find little black ceramic balls on a mesh of hexagons, which ain't great. Despite hexagons being the best of gons, in this case, they are slightly problematic. Uh, so what I'm going to go on ahead and do then is I'm actually going to use the camera zoom here to, to help me identify the number of these. So I have, uh, right now I have an empty one, two, three, four, five, six, 
five, six, seven. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So somehow we are missing a ball. The question becomes, where did it go? Uh, and the answer to that is nobody knows. I'm going to pull this slightly this way. There it is. There you are, you little bugger. Found you. All right, I'm going to actually put a little bit of oil onto the blade there. I know I'll need some, and that'll help me pick this guy up. Come on now. There we go. All right, so that gives me seven and seven holes. All right, beautiful. So now we have all of our, uh, all of our bearings in one single place, and now I'm going to proceed to clean them. Right, I can go ahead and do, just kind of poke these out here. And you see, these little tiny balls have a tendency to stick to every damn thing. It's not ideal. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get them all out of this. And then lift this away. Opa! Alright, I have, how many of these things do I freaking have? I have one, two, three, four, five, fourteen. All right, so I should have fourteen. Okay, beautiful. So now, now that I've got that done, I can do two things. First off, I can clean this little brass dude, or maybe copper. Not 100% sure. Yeah, this looks pretty coppery to me. All right. So I can clean those. Next thing I can do is take this guy and then just kind of work this a little bit, right? The goal here is just to kind of clean these off a bit. Um, and I can kind of wrap my fingertip here. And the goal is just to move all of these into one place. And then I can kind of just wash them off like so. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let's go on ahead and do a quick inventory real quick. I'm going to use the zoom of this camera here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, fourteen. Okay, beautiful. So we're going to take this whole little affair, now that these balls are clean, I'm going to move them here. That way I just don't have to deal with them. Now I have all of those balls under control. Here's what I'm going to do on the other side. All of them are already in place. So I'm going to start off by doing a little bit of static cleaning here. In many ways, that's probably fine, right? But instead, what I'm going to go ahead and do, because I am a masochist apparently, is I'm going to try and just drop this whole washer out of there. In doing so, I have lost no balls. That's really nice, actually. Folks, as an owner of balls, you don't want to lose them. Not a great idea. All right, uh, they are surprisingly hard to replace. All right, so that's now actually cleaned up. And my question that I have to ask myself right now, and this is a very legitimate question, do I care enough to take the balls out individually, or is this sufficient? In the last case, I did care enough to take all the balls out because I wanted... Well, because they were already out, frankly. But in this case, I've run every one of these balls against rubbing alcohol here. And so there's not really a whole lot of reason to get in there and do extra cleaning on them. So I think I don't care. I think what I'm going to go on ahead and do is just take the show side here, and I'm going to clean this up here. The inside of this, by the way, look at this nice internal milling here. Very nice. Steel under the titanium. That's beautiful. I'm just going to leave that there. I don't care. I really don't need to care. Now what I'm going to go on ahead and do is get in here with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to prepare this side by cleaning this up. Again, look, some nice internal milling. And actually, the, the milling on this lock bar is quite beautiful. I just realized I may have been pointing to things you all couldn't see. I try to look at the camera here, but when I'm at this level of zoom, it can be occasionally tricky. But all right, that's good. Let's go on ahead, then, and put this thing back together. How dumb am I being? What's my problem here? What am I, what am I messing up? 
These screws need to go in from the clip side. That's fine. I can reverse that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to place a couple of the screws through here in the order. I totally did that backwards. That goes here. And then this goes here. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Then what I can do is I can spear the backspacer. Uh, which is not the Reaper. I've heard you shouldn't spear the Reaper. Wait, that was different. Anyways, moving on. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to lubricate the outside of the pivot here. Because once I get these balls in play, I'm done. I want to be not doing pretty much anything else. Now what I'm going to do is get these guys in position. And I'm going to move this little packet right here. Oh, come off it. Did I just lose one of my back spacer screws? Okay. There we go. Let's recenter this whole shebang. Come off it. I have managed to mislocate all of these screws in this process. All right. So, what I'm going to do, step one here, and this should be pretty visible for y'all. There we go. Beautiful. What I'm going to do is, step one, I'm going to just put a fair amount of lubrication up in here. This will be beneficial both for retaining the balls, which is good, but also for making sure that the bearing plate spins happily. But I just don't want the balls going anywhere once I get them in. I really badly do not want to drop a ball into this hole. That would not be a good idea. So uh, what I'm going to go on ahead and do is work on it on the outside here. And just kind of try and put them in one by one. And actually I should be doing this on the camera because this new phone has a zoom that is better than my eyes are at this point. Which is probably both a fact about aging and about this phone. All right. But this way I know y'all are getting a good view. I have considered on many occasions purchasing a full-on freaking microscope for this channel. Um, I think it would be amusing to me in a great sense and occasionally valuable for things like this. But I can also picture just the size of the knife-making community when I bust out a microscope on their latest production knife. Um, which I don't know whether that's a pro or a con, actually. But for the moment, this zoom level will kind of do that. Where did he just go? Okay, no, it's on the... I thought I just lost that ball. All right. Well, that's a three-for-one deal, but I really don't want to take that deal right now. I want one-for-one, one, please. Yes, Balls, I know you like to pair sometimes, but no. Come on. Get your together. Okay, maybe I need to go back for more lube. Okay, yep, there we go. In there, beautiful. In there, get in there, beautiful. You can tell how I feel about this process because I just looked at my screen and said, Oh, 19 minutes, that's not bad. No, that's bad. <laughs> it's just not bad for relative to what I was afraid of here. Okay. One more. Come off it. Get in there. Go in your hole. All right. I feel like a Dursley. Um, anyways, that's actually not that obscure of a reference. Beautiful. All righty. That'll work. So, next step. 
We have a backspacer in place. That's nice. Now I need to clean the blade. That's actually a thing I haven't done yet. So I'm going to go on ahead and just get in here and clean the blade. What we see here is that there is uh, some kind of writing up here. Right? I can't read it offhand, so let me grab a jeweler's loop, which I do actually have handy. I'm curious what this is going to say. I can't apparently wear a jeweler's loop over a Batman mask, which is... God, not a sentence I ever thought I'd be saying. Uh, 12DC1... I'm assuming this is some kind of a serial number here. And it's a very long serial number. So, that's cool. All right. So, we have ourselves a serialized knife here. You can tell by all the cornflakes. Sorry, the joke was a little corny. Okay. Uh, let's go on ahead and drop this in place. I'm going to do two things here. First off, a little bit of lubrication on the inside of the pivot here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little lubrication along the detent ball track as well as on the detent ball itself. Okay. So, right now, we're actually not in a lot of danger because the blade isn't under any particular tension because I imagine this stop pin is kind of out of position slightly, and that's okay. Now I want to try and do the same thing as I just did, except I want to do it in a perfect, absolute, ideal world my goal here is to get this entire thing just to seat itself on top of that. So what I'm going to do to avoid dropping balls into the center of the thing is I'm going to try and just... Actually, I need to be not an idiot about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate these first. Just a little tiny bit. <laughs> he says dumping a gallon and a half on here. Freaking Exxon Chavez. Um... But what I'm going to do is just do that, and that should keep them in their little sled. Because the goal here is not to drop them into the middle of the pivot here. And so... It's almost like I know what I'm doing on occasion. Holy crap, that was smooth. Alright, so now that's in place, and all the balls are in position. I'll rotate, rotate, rotate. Hot damn. Okay. Next step. First step. The very, my, my greatest desire at the moment is going to be to get that pivot in place and tighten down as quickly as I can. Because I really don't want those balls going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the pivot off here. Beautiful. That's a little on the dirty side, so let me do that again. Beautiful. All right. Now let's go on ahead, tighten this up, and I know that I am not going to be able to get this all the way in, and in fact I don't expect to be able to, but I do want to get it at least started, right? I want this to be in a position where I can very, very readily start retightening this. Okay, good. Now what I'm going to do is just a very quick flipperoo, because that should allow me to do that. Once I do this, I can get in here, and I forgot to Loctite these screws, but actually that doesn't matter as much. I mean, I'm going to go in ahead and do it anyways, but uh, they were there mostly for alignment. Had I been smart, I would have gone ahead and Loctited them ahead of time, but it doesn't matter here. All right. Now, I'm feeling some resistance. What I'm going to do is lift up on the lock bar itself. I'm using... Oh, there. Sorry about that. Let me zoom back out for you. Uh, I was using my finger right here to zoom back into the lock bar and lift that up to take the tension out of the system and allow everything to snap shut enough for this screw to fully seat. So now at this point in time, let me go on ahead and get the other two sort of in position. This guy actually can't go in until I have the clip in place, and that's fine. A little bit of Loctite here. 
once I have these two in, the back is basically going to take care of itself. Okay, now what I got to do is I am going to look very carefully here for two things. First off, I want to make sure that there are zero balls just floating around in here. Because there is a chance, of course, that I accidentally, you know, let a couple of balls fall out in that last process there. I see none of them, so I think we're okay. But I did want to double check. I'm also going to look through this guy. And what I mean by that, here, I'll try and zoom in and back again so you can see. Like, you can actually get a, uh, you can look through and see. And right now, everything looks like it's well seated and happy. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is, well, that looks to be the case. I'm going to tighten the pivot the rest of the way, or at least a good rest of the way here. At this point in time, we are out of the danger zone, right? There should be no reason that those balls can fall out because they should be trapped in there. And I also should have... Okay, it's over-tightened. That's fine. I'm probably a little over-lubricated too, but that's... Uh... <laughs> that's the nature of the beast. Oh, wow. <laughs> And sweet. Okay, that's a nice action. Good, 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 good. All right. This may... No, I'm not going to say that until I'm done here. That I, I know better than that. I should stop. All right. I'm going to go ahead and place the clip back. This may be... Well, this is my favorite hermit knife ever. This particular model here. Um, the reason I say that is that, uh, A, every time I've handled a knife by Herman, and given I've handled them chronologically, so this kind of makes some sense, but they've been getting better and better. Herman is a very, very good knife maker, among the best in the world in my estimation, and every time he does one, he learns and does better. And to be clear, I mean, I imagine he's also doing some of his better work, if you're sending it to a pretty well-watched reviewer. Um, well watched. Okay. Uh, a, a watched reviewer. I need to remember that I'm now small potatoes in the grand scheme of subscribers. But anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, uh, this is, the size is great. The knife itself, the action is great. The materials are just beautiful. He's handled them very well. I just really substantially love this freaking knife. Um, and so it's beautiful that I was able to get this apart, and this was also the easiest Herman disassembly I've ever done. I I think just by introducing the, the, the bearings in the room, I was worried I was doing a Chekhov's gun thing there, right? For those of you without the reference, the Chekhov's gun is an adage that basically says, if you see a gun on the mantle in the first act of a play, it's going to get fired in the last act. Um, I was worried I was Chekhov's gunning things a little bit with, you know, displaying the lubricant, but at the same time, dude, uh, that... Or, I'm sorry, not the lubricant, the extra balls, but that went pretty smoothly. Uh, so that's good. That's real good. And this knife's action is real good, and frankly, this knife is real good. I'll tell you more about how and why I consider it to be real good in my full review, but for the most part, hot damn, I am a fan. And I'll go ahead and just, while I'm at it here, I'm cleaning this up. I'm using actually a little bit of eyeglass cleaner, um, which I think has a little tiny bit of something to help the the materials pop a little bit more, so to speak, um, as well as a microfiber cloth, which just like, oh, heck to the yes. Heck to the yes. Wow, that was, was some high-quality profanity and avoidance right over there. You happy advertisers? They're never happy. But that's okay. They don't need to be. I don't work for them. I work for you all. All right, moving along. <laughs> and watch, that gets me demonetized. There's a little something at the very tip of this. I'm assuming that that's just gunction from the amount I've carried this knife already, which is considerable. Yeah, okay, it's coming right off with some rubbing alcohol here. Beautiful. All right, this knife is disassembled and maintained. That was shockingly easy. I am surprised. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I don't think that's a word, but I am definitely beautiful. Uh, I may not be beautiful, but I'm beautiful. So anyways, hope this has been interesting to you. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.